love Elmore's work, and it was always an honor and a pleasure spending time with him. This is from Swag. Frank Ryan's 10 Rules for Success and Happiness were written in blue ink on 10 cocktail napkins from the Club Bazooki, the Lafayette Bar, Ed Joe's, and a place called the Lindell AC. Some of the rules, especially the last few, were written on torn napkins with crossed out words and were hard to read. The napkin said, one, always be polite on the job. Say please and thank you. Two, never say more than is necessary. Three, never call your partner by name unless you use a made up name. Four, dress well. Never look suspicious or like a bum. Five, never use your own car. Details to come. <laughs> Six, never count the take in the car. Seven, never flash money in a bar or with women. Eight, never go back to an old bar or hang out once you've moved up. Nine, never tell anyone your business. Never tell a junkie even your name. <laughs> 10, never associate with people known to be in crime. <laughs> the angle on the Venetian blinds gave Stick enough outside light. He sat by the window in his striped undershorts, placing the cocktail napkins on his bare legs as he read them again, one by one, concentrating on making out some of the blotted words. He was smoking a Marlboro and taking sips from a can of Bush Bavarian that sat on the metal radiator over beneath the window. He didn't look up until the groaning sound came from the bed and he knew Frank was awake. What's that noise? Air conditioning, Stick said. You want a beer? Jesus Christ! Frank got up on an elbow, looking out the window, squinting. What time is it? About 9.30. My watch is over on the TV. Stick took a swallow of beer as Frank got his feet on the floor and finally stood up. He was wearing jockey shorts and black socks. <laughs> Where'd you sleep? Right there, in the bed with you. Stick said, but I swear, I never touched you. <laughs> He waited until Frank went in the bathroom, then reached over and pulled the cord on the Venetian blinds, raising them, flooding part of the room in the morning sunlight. He wanted to get Frank's reaction when he came out and saw the bright pink walls. <laughs> he didn't notice them right away. When he came out, he said, there's four cans of beer in the wash basin. Three are for you, one for me, Stick said. I've already had a couple. Frank was looking at the pink walls now. Jesus, where in the hell are we? Zanzibar Motel. You're about a mile and a half from where you work. You can walk it if you want. Frank stooped over a little, squinting, looking across the room at the sunlight filling the window. There wasn't much to see. Empty asphalt pavement, and beyond that, a four-lane highway with a grass median, Telegraph Road. A few cars in the semi went past. They could hear him above the humming sound of the air conditioning. Where's my car? You couldn't remember where you parked it. Frank went to the bathroom and came out with a bush. And how did we get here? You remember looking for your car? Of course I do. Frank took a drink of beer, let his breath out, feeling better. You lost your parking ticket, Stick said. I know. That's why I couldn't find the car. All those streets over there look alike. At night, shit, you can't tell. <laughs> you remember trying to get that waitress to take her clothes off? Frank hesitated. Then he drank some more beer. We had a pretty good time, didn't we? <laughs> Stick said, you remember standing in front of the J.L. Hudson Company in the middle of Woodward Avenue taking a leak? Really had to go, didn't I? <laughs> Eileen sure got a kick out of that. Frank looked at him. Eileen, huh? The one you picked up at the Lafayette bar, wasn't she a size? Frank managed to grin and shake his head. Yeah, she sure was. I was surprised she didn't get sore. He started calling her fatty. Just kidding around, Frank said. 
He went over to the dresser, opened his wallet, and fingered the bills inside. Yeah, I guess we had a pretty good time. Looking at Stick, he said, I must have paid for the cab, huh? Taxi cab? You didn't take any cab anywhere. All right, you win, Frank said. How did we get here? In the 1975 Mercury Montego. <laughs> Stick watched Frank look toward the window again. You remember, we were standing up front the Sheridan Cadillac? Frank's expression began to open up. He's showing signs of life. Yeah, they wouldn't let us in the bar because you didn't have a coat on. We were standing out front, Stick said, when the Merc pulls up and the guy gets out looking around, you remember? Frank seemed happier as he began to recall it and he could see the Mercury, dark brown, shiny, in front of the hotel and Stick walking over the guy who got out and now Frank was grinning, yeah. And yeah. you went up to the guy and you said something. I said, good evening, sir. Are you a guest at the hotel? <laughs> right, yeah. And he said he'd be an hour and he handed you the keys. And the dollar tips, Stick said. <laughs> Frank was still grinning. Sure, here, I remember it. Where's the car? Up the street, at the Burger Chef parking lot. You go out, don't look at it. Don't even walk past it. Stick held up the 10 cocktail napkins. You remember these? Sure, I remember them. What do you keep asking me that for? I remember everything that happened. Frank took the napkins over to the dresser, and he spread them out, and he stood there, idly scratching his jockey shorts as he looked at them. Stick watched him. After a moment, he said, I've been reading your rules for success and happiness. And you know what? Frank kept scratching what? I think you got an idea. Frank will go for now. Yeah? You think so, huh? I think it might be worth looking into. It's a wild ass idea. Two guys who don't know shit getting into the armed robbery business. <laughs> but, uh, you never know, do you? He watched Frank go into the bathroom again and he raised his voice. I'm thinking maybe it's a way to make a stake. Be able to put a down payment on something that'll carry you instead of working all your life. That's what I've been doing, working. What have I got? Eight bucks in my pants, nothing, not a cent in the bank. Working is for working men, Frank said. Coming out with two cans of bush, he walked over to Stick and handed him one, raising his own. To our new business, huh? What do you say? The new business. Stank, stick, raised his beer, took a sip. I'll tell you a secret, buddy. Put your mind at rest. Frank seemed interested. What's that? Last night, you didn't take a leak in the middle of Woodward Avenue. I didn't? Uh-oh. I did. <laughs>